And now, delivered to you straight from the 505's most news-biting source of politi comma entertainment it's the New Mexican Inquisition with Kendra Jean Brand. <laughs> Welcome to the last episode of the New Mexican Inquisition for 2018. Woo! You guys, we, we did it. We stayed alive. We didn't die. I'm so excited. Uh, you know, we have some amazing guests for you tonight. I am so excited to have Jacob Chavez of the Silver String Band. And we also have Zach Quintero. He's president-elect of the Young Democrats of New Mexico. Cool. That's so cool. But you know what, guys? Before we get to that, we have some biting news. So biting. <laughs> you know, after an unsuccessful run for governor, Representative Steve Pierce has been elected chairman of the New Mexican Republican Party. That's right. And that's on the platform. Um, he has plans to reach out to minority voters and into traditionally Democratic strongholds. He said, we are going to show up where they don't expect Republicans. So like Rio Grande CBD and Sidewinders? <laughs> that's all he thinks we are anyway. You know, I think I saw Steve Pierce sitting in the lobby of Planned Parenthood last week. <laughs> Speaking of which, with uh, Roe v. Wade becoming less and less secure, abortion rights just may be returned to state control. And with that possibility in mind, two groups are seeking to abolish a 1969 state law restricting abortion to rape, birth defects, or risk to the mother's health. So the party, yeah, I know. The Party for Socialism and Liberation and also ANSWER are calling on legislators in 2019 to put their money where their menstrual cups are. <laughs> and you know, that law may be almost 50 years old, but we here at the New Mexican Inquisition, we would have terminated that baby in its first trimester. The Bernalillo County Commission is set to vote on a new mental health initiative. UNM plans to design and implement care and coordination with the Bernalillo County um, Department of Behavioral Health Services. And the vote is a no-brainer, and all commissioners are expected to vote yay! Unless, of course, supposed Democrat Stephen Michael Cusada is told by his corporate handlers something else. Yeah, in which case... He may vote, he may vote no, or a popular choice of his, just not show up at all. <laughs> Kazada's voting record is more inconsistent than my vacation bowel movements. <laughs> it's a little intimate, guys. We're getting real close on this last episode of the year. There was a recent surge in income from New Mexico's oil sector, adding more money to our state financial reserves to a sleek $2.5 billion. That's right. And Democratic governor-elect Michelle Lujan Grisham is saying that she plans on using those financial reserves to kind of bolster our public school system and try to climb out of the bottom, too, for being last in education. Yeah. Yeah, pro sync. You know, maybe, just maybe, we can get educated enough to realize that we should be investing in fossil fuel alternatives. You know, something like solar energy or electric buses. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, at a recent annual Santa Fe County employee holiday party, it ended in violence. Leave it to us, guys. An attendant, PJ Montano, struck a Santa Fe Sheriff's Lieutenant straight in the face. <laughs> That's right. And then he went to hit 
a 22 year old in the chest who is a dispatcher and a female. That's right. But you know what? What's really surprising? The lieutenant didn't even shoot him. <laughs> then again, this was in Santa Fe. If it were in Albuquerque, we'd be spending all that oil money on employee funerals. <laughs> Guys, CenturyLink has given New Mexico a Grinch rating for its Christmas spirit. That's right. We're in the bottom 10 states based on Google searches tweets on Christmas, shopping trends, uh, Christmas music streaming. Talk about gringo bias. If you were to toss in some Feliz Navidad, Luminarias, sailing the beautifully lit Pecos River, and all of our seasonal native Pueblo dances, you can't even handle that much Christmas. <laughs> That's right. I've been fasting for two weeks because I plan on going full Burqueño on some Christmas tamales and bizcochitos. <laughs> Can't handle this Christmas spirit, other states. <laughs> Guys, I'm so excited you're here. Stick around. We have some great guests. Woo! Don't go anywhere. Yeah. Just contact us on our website at nminq.com. to the New Mexican Inquisition. I am so excited to present to you our musical performer of the night. It is Jacob Chavez of the Silver String Band. When Sunday morning came along he never did know what to say So he'd walk through the field singing While all the others would pray It burned just like the bitter horn The back of his tongue when he drank So he sparked lights on late nights Pick strings till the morning came And he'd say that I've been waiting for Jesus But I don't think he's coming my way Yes, I've been waiting for Jesus But I don't think he's coming my way Desert days and mountain tops. Knew he'd begin to find his way through the whiskey, the late nights, the cold floor. Lord, see another day. When Sunday morning came along, he still didn't know what to say. So he'd walk through the hills singing while all the others would pray. And he'd say that I've been waiting for Jesus, but I don't think he's coming my way. Yes, I've been waiting for Jesus, but I don't think he's coming my way. I've been waiting for Jesus, but I don't think he's coming my way. Yes, I've been waiting for Jesus, but I don't think he's coming my way. All right, give it up for Jacob Chavez. That was amazing. Thank you. I'm so glad that you prepared a Christmas song for us. <laughs> Had to be festive. Yeah, that was very sweet. Yeah. I'm always waiting for, for Jesus on Christmas Eve. And he comes every time. It's a big birthday. Yeah. It's very nice. Uh, tell me, how long have you been playing music? Oh, man. I started playing 
the violin when I was in like the first grade. Okay. And then I couldn't decide what I wanted to play, so. You kind of just did everything? Because I heard you're also a mandolin player, Yeah, correct? that's, that's kind of what I do. That's my main gig right that's, now. That's your baby, <laughs> the mandolin? Yeah, that's what I do with Silver String Band and kind of working around with some other folks. And, okay. But I mean, I've been playing the guitar longer than anything else. So uh, you started when you were 10. I don't know how old you are. How long have you been playing music? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, so that would be 21 years. Oh, wow. Yeah. You're aging okay. Well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Uh, so you play with Silver String Band. How long, have, how long has the band been together? Oh, man. We've kind of worked through a couple of different, different lineups. We were a band named Peg Leg Joe for a while. Oh, that's And then fun. with the implementation of Paul Hunton and yeah. Lars Fabricius Olsen, we kind of adjusted to Silver String Band, and that's been like a three-year project that we've been working together on, or three-plus years. Very cool. Well, yeah. you guys are uh, well-loved in Albuquerque, I think. Woo! Um, some tepid moves is always good. Uh, um, oh man, I had a question for you, and then their their tepid woos just made it go. Woo! Woo! <laughs> what kind of music does Silver String Band play? Oh man, well we got to be careful saying bluegrass because that's like a whole whole discipline thing. But yeah. we're like a, a grass influenced okay. Americana band. Okay. If that, yeah. If that makes sense. So just like a. a a pinch of bluegrass, not like a whole cup full. Yeah. Cool. Um, so as a musician, do you think that you're better than people who don't play music? Most of the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I find, no, not at all. I find that to be the case. Uh, no, we're, you we're, seem we're, very humble. We're kind of broken people. That's what yeah, well, and that's so kind of the same with comedians. Yeah. You know, you find that all comedians are a little bit depressed and broken, and we just want somebody to love us. Exactly. Um, Seeking attention. Would you say that the music world parallels the comedy world where say like you win an award and then half of the other musicians decide that you don't deserve anything? <laughs> Depends, but yeah. Okay. All right, we got so we got some parallels going. <laughs> uh, do you have anything coming up? Yeah, I mean on uh, the 20th is coming coming up the, in a couple of days I'm going to be at Tractor Wells Park playing a solo set. Um, I'm collaborating with a clothing designer and kind of reseller of vintage stuff from out of Austin, Texas that I went to high school with. Did you teach them to play some music? Are they going to be in the band? When we made the poster, that was her primary <laughs> concern. She was like, I'm, I'm trying to sell stuff and I'm not playing music. And yeah. she, she looked like a performer, so we had to adjust the poster. But I couldn't get her on stage with that, me, so we'll just kind of deal. Cool. So just supporting other local creatives. Yeah, art share. That's a that's, that's big, the way big to go. part of it. That's what we're doing. We're art sharing right now, guys. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. Uh, cool. Well, I'm so glad that you are here. We're going to go yeah. to some brief messages. Please give it up once again for Jacob Chavez. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Just contact us on our website at nminq.com. Welcome back to the New Mexican Inquisition. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Woo. We already had such great stuff so far. It's hard to believe that we have more. <laughs> but we do. Yeah. Give it. Give it up because we have a very exciting guest with us. He is the president of the Young Democrats of New Mexico. It is Zach Quintero. Thank you. Thank you so now, you know, I, I asked um, Jacob if he preferred his last name to be pronounced Chavez or yeah. Chavez. I didn't ask you, do you prefer Quintero or Quintero? Well, d depending upon the person that's trying to pronounce it, you know, it's, it's kind of difficult sometimes. F some folks say Quintero, right? Okay. Some folks say Quintero. I've gotten Quintana sometimes. Right. Yeah. yeah, depends. It's, it's very democratic of you to be like, you know, whatever you want. <laughs> We'll just go with you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just go with you like. Yeah. All right. Um, so you're the president of the New Mexican Young Democrats. I am, yes. Uh, and I understand uh, one of your is issues is to address brain drain. That's yeah. right. We're jumping right yeah. into the hard questions. You need to tell me what brain drain is, man. Okay. It's <laughs> where we have a loss of population per year, and that majority of that population that's w that we're losing 
are young families and young professionals and students choosing to go outside the state because they're facing economic conditions that leave them no other choice. Okay, so we're actually like physically losing younger populations because they're leaving the state. Exactly. This isn't like a metaphor. No. Okay. Um, so what are some strategies that could help? And why do we even want these people to stay in New Mexico? Well, two reasons. This Fair question. The first is that young people are quite cool. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I am. I think we got to stay cool. You know, New Mexico wants to be cool. Santa Fe is always cool. Don't get me wrong. But um, the main reason is that our economy needs it. It's a fundamental building block to a society. Yeah. And by that, we're the fourth um, oldest state in the union. We're the fourth fastest aging state in the union. Do you know what the oldest one is? I probably think it's um, Florida or Arizona. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, I'm not too sure. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. you remember the election Retirement results in, in Florida. So yeah, I'm not going to yeah. go into that one. But let's I not be there. Florida. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, so the main point is that, you know, we're the fourth fastest aging state in the union. We're going to have sectors of our, of our economy change overnight. And yeah. if we don't have the labor force needed for that, we're going to face some serious problems. So we got to do everything to keep the talent here. And that includes student loan reform. That includes a millennial entrepreneurship tax credit. That means taking climate change seriously because we're going to lose the pinon tree by 2030 if we don't do that. And if we do that, then yeah. our economy is going to tank. We can't lose that pinon tree, guys. Well, that, well, here's the main point. Hashtag save the chili. 2052. Atmospheric conditions change so much that farmers can't do it in southern New Mexico. Yeah. What are we going to do? That's our identity. That's our birthright in this state. If we don't have that, we don't have anything. You're going to be... Yeah, give it up for him. I can tell that you're going to be governor someday with these no. slogans. Hashtag got to be better than Florida. Hashtag <laughs> save the winner. chili. <laughs> Those are the building blocks to just a great just campaign. Just go with the ladder. The ladder is yeah. better. Yeah. <laughs> As somebody that uh, grew up in Florida, I take offense. Good. You should. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we have better chili. We have an amazing just people. Chili in general. Yeah. <laughs> Not even no. better. Just actually, we still got that beef with Colorado. They still think they can grow chili. Mm. You know, that's that's not real. That's not real. But they do have recreational marijuana. And we're working on that. That's one of our legislative priorities, actually. Yeah. Is that a legislative priority for 2019, or is that kind of a further goal? No, that's a legislative priority for 2019, along with um, expanding Medicaid and being able to focus on climate change in a student loan reform bill. Very cool. Yeah. Um, so we have a new legislative session yeah, on the horizon. I can see it. I'm looking. I see it. And there it is. You know what I heard? It's longer than usual. So usually it's a 30-day session, yeah? And now yeah. this is going to be a 60-day legislative session. 60 days of madness. It's going to make the good wife look like PBS. <laughs> I'm excited. Yeah, it's uh, going to get real. So you're, you're going to... That's cool, man. Sorry. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to make Narcos look like PBS. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. I understand. So you're going to be involved with this in some way? I will be, yeah. So um, Legislative Day, we're going to be kicking off um, January 15th. We're going to be live streaming, covering different interviews, um, some with some mayors. I'm not going to give any names away yet. Um, but we're also going to meet with legislators to talk about you know, their ideas and what they're going to be pushing and attaching that to our legislative priority list, which I, we, we went through already. Very cool. But I think it's going to be a fun time. They can follow at NM Updates. At NM Updates. NMU on, on like Updates. On Facebook, Tweet, on Twitter. On Facebook. Um, they can do on Twitter at Young Dems NM. Very cool. Follow us there. Yeah. Okay. What about, what about Insta? Insta. We you got guys on Instagram the IG? Well. Yeah, we're on the Insta. You snapping? We snapping. You snapping too? Yeah. We got everything covered. Cool. Yeah. That's very millennial of you. You know, they, that's what I'm told as well. But we also have ideas too. So no, that's, that's uh, great. It's yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, so, I actually didn't forth. mean millennial to be a slur because I too am a millennial. millennial yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So tell me, do you have any Republican friends? Yes, I do. Yeah, quite a number. Do you, is it just like keeping your enemies closer? No, kind of thing? it's kind of a behavioral study project, okay. just kind of like long term, because yeah. it's, it started off from a point of like, you used to vote for education and the environment. You have a guy that's supported by the Klan now. <laughs> Where are you exactly in an identity phase? And then they go like, we're, we're out, we're cashed out. Yeah, we're, we're not tuning in at all. Yeah. So, all right. Uh, tell me, are there, is there like a young socialist? 
Party of New Mexico? I believe there is. There's the um, Democratic Socialists of America. Um, okay. They have student chapters as well. Um, you know, we have socialists in our Young Democrats group. We have socialists in the Democratic Party. We're a big tent party on purpose and on principle. Now, how so. about uh, communist? Is there a yeah. young communist party of yes. New Mexico? Um, no, I don't know of New Mexico, but there's a young communist party in the United States. So what yeah. made you decide to go mainstream? Mainstream? With yeah. Democrats. You could have gone full on. Well, that's true. Yeah, so wh <laughs> why didn't we commit as further left as we, as we could yeah, have? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no. Because I think good ideas don't really know a party, and the best party that we have right now to like carry those ideas is the Democratic Party. So, that's why. Very cool. Um, so, as the young Democrats of New Mexico, I imagine that you guys have to have some insider tattoos. We do. Um, there's a hazing. You know, we we all have to have an initiation. Okay. Is very it all very like Cruceño or? It's a bit, you know, Cruceño, if I may. Woo! It's okay. also. Tao Seña, yeah. no, Vega Seño, right? Burqueño, all those you, things. You have a lot of tattoos. Do you have, a, do you, you have some New Mexican tattoos? What you got here? Oh, you have the state That's of beautiful. New Mexico yeah. on yeah. your arm. Right there. That's yeah. gorgeous. <laughs> do you have anything like that? Yeah, I got these great green chili socks. Oh, yeah. he's got green chili yeah. socks. Yeah. yeah, green and red chili socks right here. Yeah. Hashtag save the chili. Well Literally, yeah. Chavez, Local 20, shop too. Rotate. 2030. Yeah. Chavez 2030? Yeah. Oh, Quint I didn't know Quintero. I was yeah. I'm, I'm for you this gotta, guy. You gotta yeah. do I guess it too. He's an educator, we're, we're so yeah. We're all politicians Absolutely. now. <laughs> yeah. I gotta soup somewhere. Um, Good, you know, man. I know you that either of you are females, but I heard of this really cool program that if you decided to become a female, you could, yeah. you know, you could learn from them. Just keeping it in mind if you do plan on running, you know, look up Emerge New Mexico. Right on. Yeah. <laughs> Just giving them some more love because pro sync! Yeah. <laughs> So tell me, um, and actually, why don't you direct this to a beautiful camera? What is it that you would tell a young person in New Mexico who wants to get involved, who wants to see change, who feels desperate and hopeless? How can we move things in a, in a like with more progress? How do we get there? How do we how do we fight the system and actually make real change and stop just talking about it? Sure. So, um, where would I direct the, the pitch to? Right here. All right. Thank you, Stephanie. So. What I would say is that for the longest time, uh, our generation has been overlooked as a couple of things. Entitled, um, not expecting to adjust to the hard responsibilities of life, and just not being able to tune in and be able to get the things done politically that people have done before us. And I'm here to tell you that's all false. That's not real whatsoever. We are the first generation to ever have the amount of information at our fingertips that any other generation has had before. We are the most educated generation in the history of the United States. Ironically, we are also the first generation anticipated to never own a home. We are also the first generation to have climate refugees as a product of prior generations not being able to move the ball on certain legislation. So it's not a matter of, you know, you feel disconnected and you don't have a voice. It's that it is a moral imperative for us to act now. If we don't do it, who will? That's got to be you. Yeah. Can I just say that I am so glad you are the future of New Mexican politics. It was such a pleasure to so have much. you on, Zach Quintero. Give it up once again for Jacob Chavez. This has been the New Mexican Inquisition. Thank you so much. We're going to be taking a holiday break. Spend some time with your family and we'll be back in January. Woo!